Hit and run, I guess. He's still breathing. Still breathing? We better get him to a hospital. Do we have to? And my car? Finding him was bad enough. Boy, you're a real humanitarian. Come on. Anything doing yet? Not yet. Not a glimmer. I wish he'd come too so we can take the bandages off his eyes. Well, I said he threatens to be good looking. Wonder if he's married. If he appeals to me, he's married. <laughs> well, you can't do anything with an unconscious guy. You should know some of the men I've been out with. Well, this patient seems to be getting plenty of attention. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Carey. Good morning. Good morning. Ordway's our star boarder. Ordway? Has he regained consciousness? Oh, no, Doctor. No, we, we just call him that because he's in the Ordway room. Oh. Is there anything new about him, Doctor? Not yet. The Missing Persons Bureau has no report on him. Still no response to the radio and newspaper publicity. Apparently, nobody misses him. I would, if he were mine. Well, it's about time. My, my eyes. They're bandaged. We're going to take care of that right now. Close the blinds. The light will hurt his eyes. If he can still see. Oh, who are you? I'm a doctor. You're in the hospital. What's hospital? You were probably hit by a car. All right, now. Keep your eyes closed. When I tell you to open them, open them very slowly. There we are. All right. Slowly now. Open your eyes. Can you see my hand? Yes. Fine. Fine. You had us a little worried there for a while. Who are you? I'm Dr. Carey. How'd I get here? Just a minute, just a minute. One thing at a time. Case history blank, please. I'll ask all the questions. Yeah. Now, we'll start right at the beginning. What's your name? My name is... It's a... Uh, I, I can't think. My head. Well... And you're still a little weak. There's no hurry for this. No. No, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know who I am. Oh, take it easy. Take no. it easy. I don't know who I am. Yours? Yes, thanks. I'm visiting a relative up here, brother-in-law. He told me about your trouble. You got that uh, amnesia. Can't remember who you are. Yes, I, I suppose everybody in the place is talking about it, too, huh? Too bad. Tell me, uh, what do they do for it? How do they cure you? Well, it's hard to say. The doctor says it, it may clear itself up any time. Then, then again, it may never happen. Don't you believe it, Phil? I don't. Phil, do you know who I am? Sure, I know. So would Pearl, Nick, and Joe. Pearl? Nick? Joe, what? Lay off, will you? That Axis phony's a $3 bill. You know who I am. Tell me. No, you tell me. What'd you do with that valise? Oh, go on. You tell me. Where's the valise? The real one. Did you hide it? For, uh, 
uh, old way. Can't shoot a girl for trying. There was a man here. He knew me. He, he, call, he called me Phil. There were other names, too. No, 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 no. Uh, there. Give me, give me a pencil. Keep that for you? We'll start your case history with this. Was there anything he said that brought back any kind of memory? Association? No, no. It's too bad I didn't see him. Uh, you may go, nurse. Well, anyway, he left your lunch. Mind you, eat it. Or C may not actually know you at all. Betty tell you you're leaving the hospital tomorrow? Leaving the hospital? Yes. They need your room for sick people. Oh, but, but I can't, doctor. You're only I... leaving the hospital. You're still my patient. I live alone. I have plenty of room. But I, I can't pay. You can. You can help by beginning a body of knowledge that'll be invaluable in treating others like yourself. <laughs> Besides, my, my interest isn't only clinical. How do you know you haven't got a million dollars stuck away someplace? Possibly in that mysterious valise, Phil. <laughs> of course, I can't guarantee to dress you in the style to which you're accustomed, Mr. Uh... Mr. No, Doctor, I'm... I'm afraid it's just Mr. Well, pick out a name for yourself. A any name but John Doe. Leave that name behind. Well, the nurses here have been calling me Ordway so long that I, I just answer to it naturally. Ordway it is, then. Now, tomorrow, we start finding out who you really are. Are you with me? Good, good. First thing we'll do is to have your fingerprints checked. Police headquarters. Your hand tells me you're going on a long trip up the river. Dr. Carey, can't, uh, can't we do this tomorrow? The sooner we get your fingerprints checked, the better. Well, one day, more or less, isn't important, is it? What's the sense in putting it off? I don't feel very well. Why don't we have a smoke out here first and relax, shall we? No, <laughs> no thanks, no. There's nothing to be afraid of. Or is there? No. No, of course not. Then what's troubling you? You can tell me. Oh, I'll be all right in a minute. Let's have that cigarette, huh? Why don't you get wise to yourself and tell us where the dough is? You'll cut your sentence in half? Okay, but you're only cutting your own throat. We'll get the dough when we catch up with the rest of your mob. Nick, Joe, and Phil. No, you won't. It's like I told you. A mastermind took it and just disappeared. All right, I'll bite. Who is this mastermind? What does he look like? Oh, he's about so high and about so blonde. I ought to push your face right down your throat. No, you don't want to do that. With good behavior, I ought to get off in about 10 years. Then I might become a private detective and compete you right out of business. Anybody got a nail file? Take him. Smart guy. Hello, 
Doc. How have you been? Thank you. Is that my message? Sure thing. Murphy will take care of you. Oh, Murph, take care of the Doc. The name, please? Robert Ordway. Robert? Ordway. Oh, the amnesia man. Well, left hand, please. No record at headquarters. Or in Washington. Mm, that eliminates that. Well, let's get on with the search. We'll start with the telephone directory. Oh. Tell what do you mean? Names. You stop me at the first one that means anything to you. Abby. Abra. Adlin. Ian. Haggard. Agason. Parker. Hill. Alfred. Alvor. Michigan. Minnesota. No. Nebraska. No. Nevada. No. New Jersey. No. North Carolina. No. Oregon. No. Pennsylvania. No. Rhode Island. No. Yale. No. Princeton. No. Colgate. No. Rutgers. No. Penn. No. Duke. No. Brown. No. 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 Happy New Year, Doc. Find any clues? Happy New Year, Robert. No. No clues. Doc. Why don't you be sensible like me? Forget it. Is that what you're doing? Sure. Sure, it's, it's the only sensible thing to do. Wipe the lipstick off your face. Huh? Oh. <laughs> You don't approve, do you, Doctor? You might at least change your brand. I can think of less nauseating methods if you insist on destroying yourself. Destroying? You can't destroy a blank. Think of many men who'd be grateful if their past were obliterated. Magic. Presto! Thirty years of a man's life vanish. Now, ladies and gentlemen, see the great Dr. Carey create a new man. A man born into the prime of life with no past, no profession, no training. You too old to learn? No, but I can't start like a schoolboy. No, of course not. That takes courage. You won't find it in that. Maybe not. But what I do find there is what I need, what I like. Wait a minute. What's all this? What are you trying to say? These are better. Cleaner, quicker, more efficient. And no hangover. Oh, no. Maybe you're Le Carey, but I'm not. There's an answer to this thing somewhere. There, there's got to be. Maybe you're too old to find it, too tired. But I'll find it. It's not in any of these books? OK. I'll write my own book. It won't be easy. It'll be grueling, hard. I don't care. You talked about beginning a body of knowledge. That's just a pretty idea to you doctors, scientists. But to me, it's real. If you can't cure me, I'll cure myself. I need that knowledge. I'll get it. Do it. Do it. Be a better doctor than I am. I will. It'll be difficult, heartbreaking. You'll have to start from scratch. I know. Sit in classes with youngsters, yes, like a schoolboy. Yes. But do it. Happy New Year, Doc. Happy New Year, Robert.
Mrs. Bradwell. How are you feeling today? When shall I come again, Dr. Ordway? Well, I suppose we don't want to make another appointment. See how things work out. And if you feel you need to see me, why, call me and we'll arrange it. Thank you so much, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss Herring. Goodbye. Oh, Doctor. This came while you were busy with Mrs. Harrington. I didn't want to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shale is next, Doctor. Shall I bring him in? Uh, no. No, have him wait for it, please. Yes. Busy? No. Uh, take over shale for me, will you? What is it this time that's more important than a 10,000 a year patient? A thief. A girl named Myrtle Perrin. But, Bob, after all... No, I know, Doctor, I'm neglecting my regular practice and all this prison work won't pay the rent. But we both know that I, I've got to do it. I just can't help it. Shades of your dark and mysterious past. There's a clue to something here, but I can't read it. Hmm. Maybe I ought to try a good psychiatrist. Can you recommend one? What for? We promised to let sleeping dogs lie, didn't we? There's no need to start them barking again. Send Shale in. Thanks. Oh, by the way, how's Mrs. Harrington? I told her there was a war on to stop loafing. What? And it worked. <laughs> Just a minute. Dr. Ordway will see you now. Thank you. Uh, will you wait here, Myrtle, please? Sit down, Myrtle. I, uh... Oh, the, uh... Warden's letter didn't quite prepare me for someone like you. You shouldn't judge from appearances, Doctor. I should think a psychiatrist would know how dangerous that is. Yes, uh, I'd like to know. Just what it is you've been doing that threatens to break your parole. Oh, we find susceptible sailors on shore leave and steer them into a certain little bar. Yes. Then we get them good and drunk and roll them for their pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you care to tell me something about your background? Why not? I was graduated from Vassar in the class of 33. With honors. How'd you happen to get mixed up with this crowd? I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. Look here. You are not Myrtle Perrin. I'm sorry, Dr. Ordway, but you really led with your chin. I'm Grace Fielding, a social worker attached to the parole board. I brought Myrtle here. Oh, I see. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about her before you saw her. Uh-huh. I may possibly have something in my files on her. Let's see. You keep your own case history? That's rather unusual, isn't it? Uh, that's just an old hobby of mine. Here we are. Sent to prison for stealing a dress. Behaved well, paroled immediately after completion of minimum sentence. That's as far as this goes. Well, her behavior's changed, and we're very much afraid that she's gonna break parole and have to go back. Mm -hmm. What seems to be the trouble? Frankly, we don't know. She freezes up completely whenever we try to talk to her. Uh -huh. And we thought maybe you might be able to break through. Mm -hmm. Let's have a try. Thank you, Doctor. Myrtle. Dr. Ordway, this is Myrtle Perrin. Sit down, Miss Perrin.
I'd like to hear your story, Miss Perrin. That is, if you, if you don't mind telling me. like this in years. You should come more often. Do you a lot of good. So that's what you've been doing these past weeks. Theaters, concerts, this. You've been prescribing for me. It's not hard medicine to take, is it? Doctor, you're just what the doctor ordered. And the doctor says you have to dance, too. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Oh, uh, let's try a waltz or something. I don't think I could dance to this. You'll learn. <laughs> Uh, which way is your office? Oh, uh, right, right over this way, sir. Right. Just, just, just follow me, please. This way. There you are. That ought to hold you until you can see your own physician. Thanks. I, uh, I didn't catch the name, Doc. <laughs> no, I didn't mention it. It's Ordway. Ordway? Mm-hmm. Dr. Ordway. Didn't I ever meet you before, Doc? No, I... I don't think so. Do I look familiar to you? Yeah. You look like a guy I used to know. Have you seen him recently? No. A long time. Maybe ten years. What was his name? Morgan. Phil Morgan. Who is Phil Morgan? What does he do? His business, I mean. Hey, hey, take it easy, Doc. Uh, you a friend of his? Yeah. Do you think I'm Phil Morgan? No, how could you be? I just got a letter from him. He's in the army. Uh, but you say he looks like me. Mm, not so much now that I think of it. Uh, what's his address? Uh, Camp something or other. I, I got it home. Tell you what, give me a card. I'll call you tomorrow and tell you. Yeah, what's your name and address? My name? Yeah. Uh, Jim Warren, 172 Eastern Avenue. Phone? Halsey 69912. Oh, all fixed? Uh, call you tomorrow, Doc. Uh, oh, uh, is everything all right? Uh, yes, yes, I guess so. Oh. Well, uh... Yeah, nothing personal, Doc. Uh, I would have been in here to help you, but uh, I hate having anything to do with doctors. It makes me nervous. I'm sure glad there's nothing wrong with me. Give me a cab. Are you kidding? Hi, Joe. Hello, Nick. Amy! When did you get out? Oh, couple, three weeks. You look nice and healthy. Yeah, don't I? It's a prison life, regular hours, good for you. I wouldn't know. I try not to spend much time there. Yeah. What'd you see inside? What do you think I'd see inside a nightclub? I mean the show. How is it? Terrible. You ain't going in there, are you? I don't know. Maybe. What are you doing around here, anyway? Just walking around. What for? It's nice. I didn't get a chance to do much of this this past ten years. Put it on the line, Amy. That was Morgan in there, wasn't it? Huh? Oh, oh you saw him too, huh? Yeah, no. This guy is a respectable doctor. He's just one of those freaks. A dead ringer. Morgan might have been a doctor for all we know about him. He was smart enough. He might have been anything. It ain't Morgan. Take my word. Now that you give me your word, I ain't worried no more. Yeah, Morgan's dead. You were there. We... Mm. 
Now, what's the big idea? Shut your face. What a no-good cockeyed liar you are. Ain't I, though? <laughs> Don't spread it around. That's Morgan. What's his angle? It's that amnesia. Can't remember who he is. Hey, is that on the level? That's what I'm trying to find out. If that's straight, then the real valise is around someplace. 200 grand just waiting to be picked up. You're a smart fella, Nick. What if he's bluffing? You know, putting on an act. He'll pay off to keep the act going. I just want to steer clear of Bright Eyes. Bright Eyes? The dame. I think she spotted me a couple of times. You're liable to get cops in our hair. I didn't count on little bright eyes. I didn't count on you boys either. But you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Proves there's some justice after all. Don't it? You don't have to say it, Bob. I know. You know what? What you were going to tell me? That ten years ago you awoke in a hospital with your memory a blank. I made it a point to find out. I told you before there wasn't a Mrs. Ordway. But there may be a Mrs. whatever your name was. Well, perhaps it's intuition. Maybe I'm just leading with my chin, but I don't think there is. But we've got to be sure. I meant what I said, Bob. Robert Ordway is the man I know. That other man, the past, they don't exist. I wish you were right. Tonight, for example, that man whose hand I treated, he seemed to know me. And then, for some reason, he denied it. I think he was lying. Maybe I'm getting neurotic, but for the past few weeks, I've had the feeling that someone's been following me. Oh, don't ask me who. I haven't really seen anyone. I have. You have? Who is he? I don't know. And I don't care. It's taken me a long time to find what I've wanted. It's worth risks for. Hiya, Doc. Oh, hello. Hello, Dave. I... Well, it's good to see you around. I thought you were in solitary. Oh, not anymore, Doc. Thanks to you. Oh, that's good. Thanks again, Doc. How you feeling, Jim? A lot better. Sure glad we had that talk. Oh, anytime. Anytime, kid. You know that. Thanks. Well, Doc. Hello, Slipsy. Hello, Doc. Say, there's something I want you to see. How do you like that tuberous Gavoni over there? And that Bogan V I'm getting started. <laughs> Looks like you've got the green thumb, Slipsy. I can take that coming from you, Doc. I got you to thank for getting me started on this. You really like raising flowers, don't you? Great. But the next con that calls me Ferdinand, I'm going to split his head wide open. Oh, say, Doc. Wait a minute. I almost forgot. Come here. The Yard Wave Rose. <laughs> Slipsy, I think you've been seeing too many movies. <laughs> yeah, say, I wish you'd talk to the warden about that. We had a double feature last week. Two prison pictures. <laughs> All right, Slipsy. All right. <laughs> All I know is that before you started working with the men, I was afraid to walk across the yard without a couple of Tommy guns. <laughs> I sent so many cons in the solitary that the ones on the outside were getting lonesome. Now, my job is just like taking a walk in a park. Oh, uh, just use a little common sense, that's all. The trouble with common sense, it isn't common. I wish you could drill a little of that into the uh, parole board. Well, there's nothing I'd like better, but I'm afraid the uh, psychiatry and politics don't mix very well. You know, Norton's leaving for the army. He's resigning as head of the board. Oh, really? Who will they get to replace him? 
There's only one logical man that I know of. You. Me? What? Head the parole board? Why not? Look, you have... Main gate. No, he's new here. Sent to us from Hartsville. Why? He made five attempts to break out over there, led in two breaks. Who is he? William Wheeler, manslaughter. Sentenced for 30 years, which for a man as old as he is means life, of course. Ex-captain AEF. Decorated several times for bravery and action. Wheeler, huh? I'd like to have a talk with him. No, don't waste your time with him, Doctor. This Wheeler is a bad character. Manslaughter is no casual crime, you know. You say he led two breaks. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's significant. He's apparently able to influence others, and that makes him important. Come in. Come in. Oh, yes, I saw what happened. Just toss him into solitary. But that sort of thing makes martyrs of them. It only increases their influence. Every time I get into an argument with you, I lose. No, <laughs> not every time. Only when you're wrong. That's what I say every time. But I'll bet you a new hat you don't get anywhere with this wheeler. I wear seven and one-eighth. I'm Dr. Ordway. Cigarette? I happen to see you make that, that break this afternoon. That was a good try. I was particularly interested in meeting you. A man serving a sentence not for a crime that marks the habitual three-time loser, like burglary or blackmail, but, but a crime of passion, so-called. A moment of uh, emotional insanity. A man who otherwise would have never seen the inside of a prison. A military officer who served with distinction in the First World War. Now our country, Wheeler's and mine, is at war again. So, uh, he keeps trying to escape, not realizing that there's no place for him in the army. But there is a way you can... you can serve, Captain Wheeler. Get out. Get out! Sit down, Captain Wheeler. Where'd you get that fine military training? Who paid for it? Don't you think you owe your country something for that? I can tell you how you can pay that debt. But if you won't listen, you're a thief. And a thief who, who wants to remain a thief. You come in here with these secondhand sermons. Do you know what it is to be locked up like an animal? Six years of your life blotted out? I've had more than six years of my life blotted out. Ten years ago, I had an accident. My life began ten years ago. And you expect me to feel sorry for you. Wait a minute. What can I do? One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, one. Back, two. Back, three. Back, four. Back, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One. 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a strange but inspiring spectacle that we've been witnessing out here at Rockford Prison this afternoon. This is really an army that's been drilling behind these walls. The men are now lined up at the far corner of the yard, waiting for a command to tackle this obstacle course that's been laid out for them. William Wheeler, their commander, is with them. His arm is raised, and here they come! <laughs> Wonderful, Warden. In a month, prisons all over the country will be following our example. Well, thank you, Governor, but you know, of course, who's really responsible. Of course I do. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Governor. This has been a thrilling afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It has made me feel very proud of our state and our penal institutions. And I am proud, too, of the man who is responsible for what we've seen here today. A man whose work in our penal institutions is already noteworthy. In recognition of the great service he has performed, both for this state and our country, I am tendering the post of Chairman of the State Board of Paroles to Dr. Robert Ordway. There's a mighty nice hat. Uh, is it new? Oh, yeah, take the care of it for me, will you? Thank you. Your Excellency and friends, I am deeply grateful for the privilege of serving as, as head of the parole board. You men and women, I understand that all the inmates of the prisons are listening in this afternoon. I want to say only one thing. I want you to look upon me as a pal, but not a pushover. I give you my solemn word that all of you who deserve paroles will get them. But those of you who don't deserve them, and well, each one of you knows that pretty well about himself, those people will find out that I can be as hard-boiled as they are. Morgan. Phil Morgan. Though, I'm, I'm hoping I can turn all the no. prisons in this What's state into you? haunted houses. What? If I can, be sure... Do you believe I in will. ghosts? But how soon? Is Miss Fielding here? Not yet, Doctor. But there's another patient waiting. Now? Oh, you shouldn't have made another appointment for today. Well, I didn't. It's this gentleman's first visit. Well, uh, I can't see him now. Uh, I'm leaving in a few minutes. Well, that's what I told him, but he insists on seeing you. What's his name? He wouldn't tell me. That's interesting. Uh, send him in. Yes, Doctor. Good afternoon. Sit down, won't you? Thanks, Doc. I came for a, a little advice. Well, I'm afraid we can't do much more than get acquainted this afternoon. I have to leave in a few minutes. Maybe a few minutes will be enough. If I get the right answers. Well, that's not always so simple, but we'll see what we can do. How did you happen to come to me? A uh, mutual friend told me about you. Oh, really? Who? fellow you fixed up in the nightclub. Oh. 
He gave me a phony name and address. Why do you suppose he did that? Must have had a lapse of memory or something. You know how that is. Yes. What seems to be your trouble? Did you ever get the feeling that you've been someplace before, that you met someone before, but you ain't sure? Like, like in a dream? That's a frequent experience. As a matter of fact, I have that feeling about you. Now, ain't that funny? I have that same feeling about you. Yes, but that isn't really what you came to see me about. Mm, no, not exactly. Did you ever get the feeling that, that you'd been followed, but you don't see nobody? Yes, I have. Well, you see, I'm the opposite. I get the feeling that I'm following somebody. Man, I know. But when I catch up to him, he acts like he don't know me. And then, all at once, I remember he's supposed to be dead. And I ain't so sure it's him. It's uh, got me all mixed up. What do you want with this man? $200,000. My dough. Have you ever thought of going to the police? Uh-uh. Cops ain't no good for this. Why not? They might find out something they oughtn't to know. What is it they shouldn't know? Wait a minute. Who's supposed to be helping who here? I'm trying to help you. You ain't doing so good. Wait a minute. Wait. Uh, uh, I'd like to see you again. If it, uh, Give me your name and address, and I'll arrange for another appointment. That won't be necessary, Doc. I'll be seeing you around. Mac, two beers. I ain't been able to go home on account of you tailing me. Makes me nervous. What do you want? What do you want? Oh, a million dollars, castle in Spain. Know where I can get it? You won't get it from Dr. Ordway. I never go to doctors. I'm healthy. Besides, the man you saw coming out of Dr. Ordway's office was tall and thin. I'm short and fat. What's your angle, sister? Please, I've got to know. Was there a woman? Did he have a wife? I don't know the man. How would I know his wife? All right. But I'm telling you right now, if I ever see you trading Dr. Ordway again, I'll have you arrested. In love with the guy. That's a great angle, that is. Listen, Bright Eyes. Don't come looking for me anymore. I don't like it. Like I said, it makes me nervous. Beat it. What does she want? Women. What do they always want? She wants to get married. How did she get here? I waited for her. We gotta steer clear, Morgan. If she spots anybody, she'll call Copper. What'd you get out of him? KG's a cat. I still can't figure out what he's bluffing. Well, what are we gonna do? I'm getting a feel if we don't get that dough out of him, I'll make him like he's supposed to be. Dead. If we knew he's bluffing, yeah. Otherwise, not so hot. Bright eyes just gave me a better idea. You boys know where we could get a hold of Pearl Adams? Pearl? Gee, I, I haven't heard of her in years. That's a great idea. Pearl Adams. Yeah. Only first, we gotta find her. So 
it is Morgan, huh? Nick always said you didn't know how to use a gun butt. No man is perfect. You're telling me? Well, what are we going to do about our friend? We're still not 100% sure it's him. So number one, you put in for parole. Parole? Are you kidding with my record? That's just the point, Bright Eyes. If you get the parole, we'll know exactly where we stand with Dr. Robert J. Ordway. So on the basis of the splendid record of your activity at Rockford Prison, the board has decided to recommend your immediate release on parole. Good luck, Wheeler. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Ordway. Thank you. Thanks for what you did for those men. Well, who's next? Pearl Adams. All right. Pearl Adams. That chair, please. I'm Dr. Ordway. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Sit down, Miss Adams, please. Miss Adams, are there, are there any facts you wish to add to what we already know that may have bearing on your appeal? Well, as the politicians say, the record speaks for itself. There's a Norton payroll job, $200,000 worth. The record speaks for itself too well. That $200,000 was never recovered, according to the record. That's right. The guy who crossed us up and got away with that money was a smarter crook than any of us, Doctor. Well, the rest of your record could hardly be called an improvement, Miss Adams. For all twice, and each time sent back for new offenses. Frankly, I can see no basis for granting parole. Aren't you being kind of tough on a girl, Dr. Morgan? Uh, I mean, Ordway? Why did you call me Morgan? Did I call you Morgan? <laughs> I guess I got mixed up, Dr. Morgan. Oh, what's the matter with me? Ordway! Why do you mix up the names of Morgan and Ordway? I can't imagine why. Who is Phil Morgan? I, uh, how should I know? The, the name just, just popped into my head for no reason at all. You had a reason for coming here and calling me Morgan. What? Where'd you get that idea, Doc? No convict with a record like yours would normally apply for parole. What was your reason for coming here? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. No, I... No, honest, I... Now, who is Phil Morgan? Well, what is this? Dr. Ordway, I... Just a minute. Be... Just a minute, Mr. Martin. Who is Phil Morgan? Let me out of here. Sit down. Who is he? I don't know. You're lying. Who is he? He's a crook. A no-good lying crook. What was your connection with him? Me. He thought he was too good for me. But he was good enough to plan the biggest robbery this town ever saw. The Northern Payroll job. He was smart and smooth like you, Doctor. Used his brains. His fingers never touched any dirty work. That was for us. He made the plans. The dirty work was left to mugs like Amy, Nick, and Joe. Am I Phil Morgan? What is the meaning of that? Am I Phil Morgan? Yes. You're Phil Morgan. Uh, gentlemen, I... I have no choice but to give you my resignation. Bob. Bob, I know what happened today was a shock, but... Well, I... I just can't pretend it didn't happen. But you can't let it destroy your life, your work. You're needed at the parole board. That's exactly the point. How can I sit on the parole board, half believing that I'm a criminal myself? Because you've proved your value. 
Suppose you do succeed in recovering your past. Are you a better, more useful man for having found out? Don't you think I'd like to forget what happened today, to play it safe? To think only of what's ahead? Bob. Yes, Grace, and I mean for us, too. I'll take my chances, Bob. I don't care. Look, the date of the Norton robbery was one day before I was found on Queens Road. One day I looked up the records. The criminals involved were Pearl Adams, Nick Ferris, Joe Dillon, Emilio Casperi. Nick, Joe, Pearl. Emilio must have been the one that came to see me. That Norton payroll money has never been recovered. That's why they're after me. And they're going to keep after me. I've got to find them. And if you do... Well, I'm not sure. Uh, details, places, anything might help. Perhaps even reenactment. Don't start this, Bob. Please, please, for my sake. He's a dangerous man. He'll kill you. I know it. He? Who? The man who came to your office. I, I spoke to him. When? Uh, where? I... I followed him. What did he say? Nothing. He... Grace. Where'd you follow him to? Don't go, Bob. Please don't go. Where was it, Grace? On oh, Ninth Avenue, a bar. It's called Frankie's. I know how she made out. We'll find out next visiting day. You know, I, I got a hunch that maybe Morgan don't remember. You hit him hard enough. Hard enough, but not good enough. He should have stayed dead. What's the matter, Nick? Don't you want the 200 Gs? Sure. But no one is waiting around someplace, and you can't get it just because he don't remember. It drives you nuts. You're shaking the machine. It's, it's like a bad dream. It's, it's like when you dream that this. There's money all around you. It's, it's in the gutter, and it's on your plate, and it's in your bed, but you can't pick it up. It, it keeps slipping out of your hands. Pearl don't get paroled, I'll, I'll kill him. Let him be dead. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about $200,000. Over here. Hi, fellas. S sit down and ha have a drink. Come on. Hold it. Here. Go buy yourself a distillery. All right. Talk. Is it all right? Honest, Phil. Don't you remember us? Where's the money? I don't know. You've got to help me. Don't give us that hand over that dough. Shh, will you? Don't holler, Nick. How do you mean, help? I mean, help me remember who I was. Oh, I don't care about the money. We it... do. All right. Then answer my questions. That's your only chance of getting it. How did I get to Queens Road where they found me? Who do you think you're playing with, Morgan? Oh, come on, Amy, let's get him out of here. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. Tell him why, don't you? How did I get to Queens Road? You got slugged on the head, and you went for a ride. Oh, I see. Who did it? I did. Where did it happen? Look, Morgan, there's nothing wrong with my memory. I know you from way back. You can take my word for it. This is no time to be brainy. Brainy. I'm talking to you as a doctor. Can't you get that through your heads? You better start talking like Morgan and quick. That's what I want to do. The only way I can is if I can remember Morgan. If I can find out exactly what took place that night. If, if I can reconstruct it, it may come back to me. Tell me, where did it happen?
That's the way we were. It's close enough. Yeah. Is anything coming back to you? He wasn't there. He was on this side, near the door. Yeah, Amy, I, I think maybe he's right. You don't have to be so exact. For ten years ago, it's close enough. I'd like to be just as exact as we possibly can. Come on, come on, will you? It's hot in here. Amy, try letting them sit over there for a while. Oh, shut up. Turn off the radiator. Open the window or something. Oh. No, no, wait. Leave them as they are. Don't tell me what to do. Well, do you get away from there? You heard him. Amy, it's awful hot in here. We'll all catch cold after. It was a hot night, you said, wasn't it? Yeah, but we don't want to all catch cold. We want to really reconstruct what happens. Every detail now is important. So what are we supposed to do? The whole northern job over again? Pipe down, Nick. All right, what else? Uh, where did you say the valise was? Like I told you, right here on the table in front of you. Why? Why what? Well, why in front of me? You were just about to make the cut. Oh. Then I was the leader. So what? And you were just a trigger rat, is that right? I'm a big-hearted guy, Morgan. Don't get me sore. Cut it out, I mean, play Why don't you get me sore, either? How did I get the valise? We slipped it to you on the getaway. You wasn't hot. Oh, so then I brought the valise here, is that it? No, you brought the phony one. Is that why you slugged me? How did we know it was phony until we dumped you? Why did you slug me? Because you were chiseling on our cut. Oh, I was, huh? <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, Amy, let the guy what alone. You? Why do you suppose I brought the phony valise? Because you figured we'd beef on our cut. Oh, so you killed the goose that laid the golden egg. You got your cut, all right. Wipe that laugh off your face. What are you getting sore about? You afraid you won't get your cut this time? We'll get it. What makes you so sure? I told you before, Morgan, don't play around with me. You were pretty sure last time, too, weren't you? You know where that money is. No, not yet, but uh, we're getting warm. He's lying. He's lying, Amy. He knows! Turn over that door, Morgan. Don't make me laugh. Give me that money. Come on, get that claw off me. Go! Go! Nick, Nick! Thanks, Amy. <laughs> that did it for me, pal. You were a lot faster on your feet ten years ago. A man could take a bump like that once, but... Not twice. Nick and Joe. You boys haven't changed a bit. Come on, get your hands back of your heads. Get them back there. Phil, Phil, where's the police? You remember, don't you? Yeah, sure I remember. I remember everything. Come on, get away from that window. Hurry up. What do you think you're gonna do with that heater? Phil Morgan never used a rod in his life. I know you from way back. Maybe, Amy. But you don't know Dr. Ordway. Come on, get over in that corner. Move! Now, come on, face the wall. Fast! Give me police headquarters. Set up your headlines. The DA spiking all of Morgan's guns, but the good. money is just like I said. He had it all the time. Bunked up in Westchester someplace. If he even mentions how he reformed or his prison work, the jury's gonna laugh right in his face. Oh, they're just sitting out that three dollars. The DA's got all twelve of them eating out of his well, hand. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to make a cup of coffee. Sure, I'm sorry. Times are tough enough without taking more good-looking men out of circulation. Ladies and gentlemen, your problem as the jury is not to determine the guilt of Philip Morgan. He has fully confessed to having stolen this money. You are concerned, Millie, with recommending to the court what length of term Philip Morgan should serve. But I would like to remind the jury that there are two men concerned in this trial. One, the defendant, and the other, an innocent victim. One, a self-confessed lawbreaker and worthy of little consideration or mercy, but the second a physician, a respected member of his profession. Yet both of them occupying the same physical shell. I don't envy you, your task, ladies and gentlemen. I confess that if I were in your place, I wouldn't know how to decide. I only ask you to remember one thing. In pronouncing the guilt of Philip Morgan, you are sentencing Robert Ordway 
an innocent man to prison. The jury will please rise. The jury's still out. Ordway gave him a tough nut to crack. What a psychologist. Yeah. I'd hate to play poker with him. Five will get you yeah. ten. Morgan's yeah. name is a number. Did I ever give you a bump steer? Sure, you can set up your headlines. If he gets away with this, you're going to knock me on the head, and I'll start right. robbing banks tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Has the jury reached a verdict? We uh, have, Your Honor. The defendant will please rise and face the court. Uh, what is your verdict? We, the jury, find the defendant guilty as charged. With a recommendation for clemency. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, Philip Morgan. You have heard the verdict of the jury. The court has no alternative but to pronounce the minimum sentence prescribed by law. I hereby sentence you to a term of ten years in the state penitentiary. But. In view of the jury's recommendation for clemency, I hereby suspend that sentence and place you on probation. Our country needs men like you today. You are free to leave the courtroom, Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, uh, Your Honor, the name is not Morgan. It's Dr. Robert Ordway. Oh. Both of you, Congratulations, Doctor. I'm very happy for you. I do it all the time. I'd like to make a story on you.